This is George from Hightech Legion. When we took our first look at the Evolve ATX, you know, we talked about the fact that it does have a great amount of water cooling options. However, it is a very small case, so you do have a finite, a finite amount of space to work in, and you do have some limitations to work with. So today we're going to take a look at exactly some of the clearances and whatnot, as we promised in the first video. Uh, it's not going to be an extended look on how to mod the case, anything like that. Really just to look at the clearances, how everything fits together, so you can plan your loop accordingly and get the correct components that are going to fit together in this small space. Now, a question that keeps popping up is you have the radiator mount that actually slides out the slide out tray, uh, is can you mount fans on the top? And the answer is no. You've actually got the structural steel up top of the case itself, which um, braces the case. So everything is gonna have to be underneath, as you see here, but you've got a good amount of clearance. Now, as we discussed, you know, it pushes 120 milliliter radiator, everything out to the left side of the case away from the motherboard. So you've got 68 millimeters of clearance if you're using 120 millimeter form factor and 48 millimeters of clearance if you're using a 140 millimeter form factor. So you do have good clearance for the motherboard components without a problem. Obviously up to a 360 up top or uh, if you're using a 140 millimeter form factor, a 280 uh, millimeter radiator up top. So you do have good clearance up there, however, as we're gonna take a look at, you do have some other issues as far as uh, exactly how much uh, you can go down because of other factors. When you initially look at the Evolve ATX and look at those specs and that clearance that we just saw, uh, it's very tempting to say, okay, I can do two really large radiators, you know, because you've got uh, up in front 110 millimeters of clearance, so you can actually do a monster in the front uh, with push-pull. That's not a problem. You can also do it, you know, from the top. You can't do them simultaneously. Uh, now, what I'm talking about is thin radiator up top. Obviously, no problem whatsoever. You know, you add your fan. Got great clearance. You can still, you know, with 120 millimeter form factor, even get in there to get to your uh, headers on your motherboard and whatnot. Great, not a problem. Take it all the way to the front. Again, not a problem. But you see here, it comes and impedes on the front radiator mount. Uh, you can actually get a 360 in there if you're using a slim radiator. However, uh, you've only got right about 56 millimeters of uh, clearance if you're, you've got this mounted up top, so you're really gonna be wedging it in there. Uh, so, you know, using 30 millimeter radiator, 25 millimeter fan, uh, it literally makes contact. So something you wanna think about. Uh, now, if you're you try thinking, okay, well, I'll use a thicker radiator up top, just 240 up front. Again, you know, you wind up with the same problem because 240 is going to sit there. So unless you drop it down into the well and you're willing to lose the uh, hard drive locations, then, then you're not going to be able to do it. So you really need to plan accordingly. Uh, 280 actually becomes a little bit of a better choice up top if you're going to go thick. Just out of the fact that you get in there and you've got this clearance up here. Also, it leaves this area open for your tube uh, reservoir. And once again, you know, you've got this area for your pump where you can drop the pump down into the well here that you see. So you do have to plan a little bit accordingly. Now, uh, we're going to take a look at something here that also presents a problem when you're using a 280 up top, especially if you're using a thick 280. So you've decided to go with the big 280 up top. Or actually, you know, uh, any thicker radiator up top. Doesn't necessarily have to be a 280, but a 280 is definitely gonna be uh, much more of a problem. And you put it into place, and great, you just clear everything. But once you put the fans on, you're not going to be able to get to, as you see here, the fittings on your CPU block. Uh, also, it's gonna be impeding on the fittings in your CPU block. So that becomes a problem in itself. So if you've got a uh, CPU block with the fittings up top, that's gonna to be a problem. Now, fortunately, you know, I mean, most of them you can turn sideways and you've got clearance. Now, obviously, this is a rotary, so we can actually just move that out of the way, you know, depending on which way it's going. Um, and you'll clear 
with your fans, but definitely something to think about there uh, depending on your CPU block um, and where the fittings are located on the block. Now the front's really where you're going to have to make all your tougher decisions. Um, as you know, the floor opens up, so you can fit, like I say, up to a monster in there with pull push, uh, push pull. Not a problem there. However, you can also use that as a pump mat down the bottom and still be able to use a 240 up top. Or you can close that back up still have room for the 240 up front, mount your pump up top, and still have room for your hard drives below. Uh, whether or not you're using mechanical drives is really going to be kind of a big deal. You can actually, there is room to mount them to the back of the uh, reservoir mount here. Um, and of course there's the optional uh, bays that come with it, but if you add the bays, you have no room for a reservoir. If you mount them to the back, you're going to have to drill holes. Like I said, there's room, but there's no holes for them. Uh, so if you're using mechanical drives and you're using them down below, everything's going to have to stay up top. If you're not using them, obviously that opens a lot, a lot more room. You can actually go with the pump down below. Um, reservoir up top. You open that right up. Drop the tubing right through. Uh, if you're not doing that, obviously you're going to have to work a little bit. Figure out where your pump's going where your reservoir is going, exactly how you're going to mount, etc., and still be able to use the space for a radiator up front. So you do have some finagling to do. A lot of it's going to depend on whether or not you are using, like I say, uh, mechanical drives. Also, you can, of course, move the pump back, you know, pretty far back here. If you're using the pump mount, though, well, it fits a lot easier this way, which obviously isn't going to be as pretty. So that's that. Now, if you're using a DDC pump, obviously going to be a lot smaller, a lot easier to work with. If you're using a reservoir pump combination, uh, something like an XSPC Photon with a D5 on it or, you know, anything like that, much easier to work with. Um, or if you're using one of the EK pieces, you know, the, one, the all-in-one pieces are going to be a little bit easier to work with. You want to try and keep it compact. Like I say, it's a case with very, very finite um, space to work with. But if you plan accordingly, you can get a really nice loop done in here. With the Evolve ATX being a smaller case, it naturally lends itself to much smaller equipment. But that doesn't mean you really have to skimp. Uh, as we saw, there's some give and take, you know, no question about that. You've got about 310 millimeters to work with here, 132, uh, 133 millimeters to work with from this point where the radiator mounts back of the fans to the start of the grommets for the hard drive cage. And that's really where the concern is. Um, I actually ran into the problem not uh, with using the larger 280 millimeter radiator, not because it wouldn't fit with this radiator, but because it wasn't going to fit with the large tube reservoir that I currently have, which of course, you know, dropping it down, run into a problem with the large D5 I have. So, you know, if you're starting from scratch, DDC type pump with a small tube on top is definitely going to be the way to go. Uh, definitely, you're going to have a little piece down here instead of this entire, you know, gigantic thing, you know, open up a lot more room for you to work with. Now, of course, uh, if you're going to be taking out the hard drives and using just one hard drive mounted to the back uh, with the piece that's going to be coming out from Fantex, two mount a hard drive in the back, uh, just one single hard drive though, or if you're not using any three and a half inch drives at all, only two and a halves and using the back mounts and uh, or the front mount, you can of course take this out. You've got that entire well down here to work with. You can drop a 360 down if it's a th slim 360. You can fit a pump down there as well, or you can just put the pump down there. That opens up a ton of room as well. You can drop the reservoir down, no problem whatsoever. Use a much larger red uh, up top. So you've really got some options to work with. This, like I say, though, is the uh, area you really need to plan for, especially, you know, you're going to have your video cards. If you're using multi-video cards, you know, you've really got to keep everything right to this area. So smaller is going to be very, very important there. But all in all, you know, the... Um flexibility of the Evolve ATX is great. They really put a lot of thought into it, some great ideas, you know, but you are working with a very, very finite amount of room. You know, there's just no way around it. It's a small case. And as long as you keep that in mind and plan accordingly, you can do a really nice loop in it.